Hello, welcome to SS Unitech Susil this side and this is continuation of Azure Databricks tutorial. So in this video, we are going to see about the secret utility. So what is the secret utility and why it's very important? We will be going to see in this video. So let's get started. Before going to demonstrate about the secret utility and methodology, let me quickly go inside the browser and I will show you why it's important. If you are following my videos, then in the mount point video, remember we are using this code. So under this code, we are passing the account key and the whatever the value that we are having inside the account key, we are directly passing here. But this is not the secure way because anyone can easily go on your notebook and hack this key and it will be going to have the security issues. So instead of passing directly this key value here, we will be going to store this key value in some another place and we will be going to specify some name of that key and here we will be using that name. So this is the main use of the secret utility inside the Databricks. So let me quickly go and see how it will be working. So inside the secret methodology, if we are going to store few of the secrets inside the Azure Key Vault or the Databricks, so it will be going to store and similarly we are having secret scope two and three. So like we are having these three secret scopes here and it is going to connect with the DB. So earlier we don't have any intermediate layer by which we can make our credentials secure. We are directly connecting with the DB by specifying the credentials. Instead of going directly, we will be storing secret values inside this secret scopes. So here we are having two methods by which we can implement the secret utilities. So first one is the Azure Key Vault. So inside the Azure Key Vault, we will be storing the value and the key pair. So whenever it is required to make the connections, we can directly use the key. Secret utility inside a database workspace, it is limited to maximum 100 secret scopes. So we cannot create more than 100 secret scopes. So this is the limitations of creating the secret scope inside the workspace. There is two ways by which we can create the secret scopes. The first one, which is the Azure Key Vault bagged scope and second is the Databricks bagged scope. So what is these two and what are the differences? So first, as it names like Azure Key Vault bagged scope. So it means the secret will be going to store inside the Azure Key Vault only and it will not be going to have directly available inside the Databricks. So we should be going to use the key that is available inside the Azure Key Vault and all the required access we can specify inside the Azure Key Vault only. So in this video, we are going to see how we can create the Azure Key Vault where we will be placing the secret and after that, how we can make the mount point. So for creating the secret scope, there is no direct UI or label as of now inside the Databricks by which we can create the scope, but we are having something which is the secret slash create scope. So this is the exact same thing that you need to use for creating a scope. So you have to specify your URL and after your URL, you need to add this. So it will be open a new window and on that window, we can create the scope. So that we will see in this video, don't worry for now. And one more thing, like as I told you, we can add the access policies inside the Azure Key Vault for accessing the Azure Databricks. So we are having three permission levels. First is the manage, second is the write and third is the read. So inside the manage, it allow to change the ACL, which is the access control list. So inside, if you are going to provide the manage access, then they can be able to change your ACL and it will also have the read and write scope access and it also be having read and write scope access. Next is the write access. So it will be having the read and write access. And in case of the read, it will be only allow to read the secret scope. Those are available. So let me quickly go inside the browser and we'll try to implement this in practical. I am here in this secret notebook. So what I want to do, I want to create this mount point. So let me try to copy this and go back to here. 
so before going to create the mount point let me quickly check how many mount points are available so let me copy this and we can use the mounts so we have already seen this command in the earlier videos so that's why i am not going to explain what it is doing so here we can simply check how many available mount points are there so as we can see we are having this input this registry this result so all these mount points are there so we need to create one mount point that will be pointing to output location so as we can see we don't have any mount point for the output location so let me quickly delete this now here as we can see instead of providing this we have to use the secret so before going to create the secret so let me quickly go inside the as your key vault so here if it's not available on your wish list then you can search for the key vault so key vault will be going to login and it will be going to open like this so i want to create a new key vault or we can use the existing one so i am going to use the existing one that i have created so we can search for ssu something like this so as we can see we are having this ssu databricks key vault so i am going to open this one and inside that we will be creating the secret so if we can scroll little bit downside we can see this objects and under that we can see the secrets so inside the secret we can see option to generate or import so as we can see it is already having one of the key vault secret but i'm going to create a new one here here we can see the upload option it is certificate or manual so i'm going to go with the manual and here it will be going to point for key vault secret for output so i'm going to use the kvs out here we need to specify the secret value so how we can get the secret value remember we can go inside the storage account and on the storage account if we can scroll in the downside we can see the access key so inside the access key we can copy this access key here and we can go and this is your secret so we can paste it here next we can see this content type is optional we can leave this here we can set the activation date and expiry date so i am going to activate this right now whatever the time and after that the expiration date i am not going to specify anything here we can see the enabled so it will be going to enabled or not enabled so i am going to set this as yes inside the tags i am not going to add any tag now we can simply go and try to create this secret so it will be going to create soon we have to wait so as we can see this is created we can simply use this key value and whatever the actual secret is available under this that will be available now we can go on the databricks home side and now we need to create the secret so for creating the secret remember inside the ppt we have discussed we have to use this secrets slash create scope so simply we can go on this home and after that we can use the secrets slash create scope here is the s is the capital letter so you have to use the same we can click on enter and this page is open for creating the scope here we can see the scope name so we can specify the scope name like the secret scope and this is for the output so we can use the ss out now here the manage principle so inside the manage principle either we can go with the create or the all users so i'm going to go with the all users here we need to specify the dns name and after that the resource id so how we can get it we can go inside the key vault so under that key vault if you can scroll down and go inside the properties then we can see the vault uri so this is we can copy and this is the dns name so we can paste that value here and after that we can see the resource id we can simply see the next one is the resource id we can copy it and we can use here so this is we have done next we need to click on this create so once we are clicking on this create so it will be creating as we can see this is added now click on ok so we have successfully created the secret scope and the key vault now here we need to click on a new cell and let me try to 
see what are the available commands under the secret so we can use the db utils dot secret dot help we can execute and it will be going to showing all the available commands so as we can see the get list scopes inside the list scopes how many available secrets so let me quickly use the list scopes first so it will be going to showing up like three secret so first is the ss input that i had created earlier test input i had created earlier ss out that we have created right now now let me see the next command so we can again use the help we will see this get command so get command is very important because inside the get command we can specify the scope and after that the key let me try to use the get command and then it is asking for the scope so here we can supply the scope so scope remember we are having ss out so this is mainly your secret name so that is the scope and after that we can see the key so key will be your key vault name so if we can go here and inside the key vault we can go inside the secrets and under that we will be seeing kv s out so this will be your key value so we can simply use that key value here and this should be under the single quote let me try to execute and we'll see what will be the output of this so it is redacted it means it is not going to display actual value here but we can utilize this whenever we are making the connections let me try to copy this and here go at the top side let me put this in a variable that variable is x instead of supplying this value directly here we can use the x variable let me go and try to execute so it should be executed and you will be seeing mount point will be created with the mnt output as we can see yes so it means your mount point is created so let me quickly check if that is created or not so we can use the query for the mounts and execute it so we should be seeing here is the mount name that should be mnt input uh, let me use the display command so it will be showing up properly in the tabular format so that will be easier to find out now here we should be seeing this output that we have created right now so instead of using this variable you can also use this directly instead of this x so it will also be working but i would prefer to use the a variable and after that using the variable over here so this is the way that i am using but you can use directly as well so this is the way that companies are following very often because key vault will be storing and that key vault can be used in multiple places if you want to make the connection with the data factory then we can simply use that key vault and this single key vault will be working in the multiple places so that's why organizations are following this structure only for creating the key vault for the secret and utilizing that into multiple places thank you so much for watching this video if you like this video please subscribe our channel to get many more videos see you in the next video